Yeah, we'll work. We'll work on this while we watch this video here. This is. We're gonna hear from several of the Capitol riders. Some of them have regrets. Some of them don't. His eyebrows do look drawn on. Prosecutors have laid out an array of video as evidence against him. Good lord, look at this motherfucker with his Punisher shirt and shit. He looks like goddamn Braun Strowman from the WWE. They remain defiant, saying that they didn't do anything wrong and they have no regrets. Jessica Schneider is out front. Like if you ask me if I do it again, I want to say yes, but then I question the back of my head, would I? Former Proud Boy Josh Pruitt describes his past year as an emotional train wreck. I don't feel like I did anything wrong. Get modded. Consequences that came out of it. Welcome new mod. Prosecutors have laid out an array of video as evidence against him. <laughs> Pruitt can be seen confronting Capitol Police officers. The power! Through the shattered front doors. And inside the Capitol crypt, Pruitt is caught smashing a sign. All of it leading to eight federal charges against him, including counts for destruction of government property and acts of physical violence. But Pruitt defends his actions that day, clinging to the big lie that former President Donald Trump continues to spread and saying he has no plans to plead guilty. I was just a... Well, you are a moron, sir. You are a fucking moron that fell for a grifter. A patriot out there, you know, um... You were not a patriot. I, what I think is a stolen election. Trying to send him to prison for a few years over this, I think is a complete joke. Are you concerned that you could be, in fact, sent to prison? I am concerned. Pruitt is among the more than 700 people now charged in connection with the Capitol attack. 70 plus defendants have been sent. I hope you go to prison, sir. 30, getting jail time. The first week in January, I have to report to prison. Jenna Ryan flew a private jet to <laughs> and notably boasted that storming the Capitol was one of the best days of her life. Her lack of remorse, in part, prompted a judge to apparently she's starting like a podcast and shit to a misdemeanor. The judge saying he wanted to make an example of her after she shamelessly tweeted that she wouldn't get jail time since she has blonde hair, white skin and did nothing wrong. All those 600 people that have been arrested are now wondering what's going to happen to them. And prison is can happen. Good. You deserve it. Eric Rao got 45 days in jail after pleading guilty to just one count of disorderly conduct. Federal judge. That's James all. The too many of these are getting off way too easy. For presidential power, what he called one of the country's bedrock acts. Rao struggled to speak at sentencing, telling the judge, "There is no excuse for my actions on January 6th. I can't tell you how much this has just twisted my stomach every day since it happened." Another right. Uh, I think it twisted your stomach because you got caught. During his sentencing, he pleaded with the judge, saying he lost his family, his job, and his place within his church community after January 6th. I am in your church community. Reader said. The hurt that I have caused to other people, not just to myself, has left a permanent stain on me. Society, the hey, country... Hey, it is not a coincidence that a lot of these just dumb fuck anti-vaxxers, pro-Trumpers, you click on their profiles, and they're members of the church. They're ministers. It's no coincidence. These people are fucking nut jobs. And I don't want to be ever remembered for being part of that crowd. Josh Pruitt, though, still isn't willing to admit guilt or cooperate with prosecutors. Video of Pruitt Attach the stone of shame! ...in November 2020 went viral. Pruitt says prosecutors are asking him to help make the case against other Proud Boys facing conspiracy charges, but he claims he no longer associates with the extremist group. I don't have anybody to throw under the bus, nor would I anyway. Um, and I just... Uh, what well, at least he ain't no snitch. Because they would like me to come forward and say that it was planned. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. It absolutely was. People had all these plans of going in the building. And not to my knowledge, I was in touch with some pretty right-wing people. and uh, Yeah, it does look like he slimmed down, doesn't it? While Pruitt waits out his next court date, he spends most of his days inside his Nashville apartment wearing an ankle bracelet and abiding by a... In Nashville. Except when he's working as a bartender, something that is... Thank you, Dip! Pruitt expects his case to go to trial and says he still stands by the big lie. 
I do believe the Earth should be stolen, for sure. And do you still believe that? I still believe it. Well, you're an idiot then. And Pruitt isn't the only one. I spoke with several accused rioters on the phone. They wouldn't go on camera because of their pending cases or the fact that they wanted to stay out of the spotlight. But the handful that I spoke with, Aaron, say they still believe the election was stolen. And not only that, they don't believe it was just pro-Trump supporters who stormed the Capitol that day. They tried to tell me that they also believe it was mostly members of Antifa. In the meantime, Aaron, the FBI is still going strong. Ain't nobody from Antifa in that fucking crowd. They're still searching for about 350 people accused of violent acts right here at the Capitol. Aaron? This is incredible. They're <laughs> still searching in this country yes. for 350 people. Uh, it, incredible. All right, thank you. Still Rick. searching for 350. So in and up. Going to have over a thousand charged. Um, and of course, Michael, you were viciously attacked by rioters as you protected the Capitol. Um, you know, this is so people can see you in the midst of this, um, you know, dragged in that crowd. And uh, you, of course, uh, are now a law He looks rougher and rougher every time I see him. So as you're there and you're fearing for your life, and then you hear this report, this rioter say he didn't do anything wrong, um, that he would maybe even do it again. How does that even process through your mind? Uh, I mean, I couldn't care less about, um, you know, the individual rioters or insurrectionists uh, perspective on that day. The only thing that I'm interested in uh, with regards to their behavior is accountability. Uh, I mean, this dude's a badass. I'll give him that. Um, I want them to be held accountable for those crimes. Now, of course, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, it, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your point. Uh, if they are remorseful, uh, the time, you know, for the uh, to plead for the mercy of the court is at sentencing. And if they're not, um, you know, feel free to uh, to let the judge know that you're uh, not remorseful for your actions. Yes, please, please you know, let him know. You mentioned, what, more than 300 people that they're still looking for. I, I, I find that shocking, Michael. I mean, I think to myself, oh my gosh, this is America. You have the FBI on this. You've got hundreds of hours. With of the surveillance state we have, how the fuck have they not found 300 and something people? They, charge, they can't find. And I know you're saying this is accountability is what really matters. And another officer who you testified with um, said earlier that if the people who perpetrated the attack aren't brought to justice, then then it's not accountability, that it could happen again. Let me just play what Officer Ganell said. Hold people who are responsible accountable, including those elected officials, because if they don't do that, this might be a recurring issue every four years. Thus far, Michael, right, it's, it's the people who actually were there rioting, the insurrectionists being charged, and 300 of them they, they can't even find. The ultimate white privilege. But none of the politicians who said the words and the lie that caused all those individuals to be there. Do you have any hope that the right people will be held accountable? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm... My I have not heard about them finding out who put the bombs at the DNC and RNC headquarters. I think that, um, unfortunately, many of these politicians are going to get but away. Apparently, they do know that the bombs were put there in order to distract the D.C. police in order to keep them away from the Capitol from being able to respond. So I'm going to assume it was one of the, the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, one of those groups hiding behind, uh, you know, political speak and, and um, the idea that, uh, you know, that their words were, um, uh, were not intentional. Uh, so, no, I, I don't believe that there's going to be a count. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, I fucking Gozar. For that day. I absolutely I believe they were in communications with some of these groups. Uh, resulted in the insurrection at the Capitol. So I know that you've, you've talked about that day and other of your colleagues have as well, the trauma that it caused, the, the real toll that it continues to now take. Apparently they're up to now. 50 yeah. members of the House that want to expel Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene. Staffing is in short supply. A Capitol Police officer told the Washington Post, Michael Sling, probably you know, of course, better than anyone, but the quote was, there's a dark cloud over Capitol Hill. I looked at officers' faces and they've changed. They've lost weight and they don't know why. The Capitol Police Chief Michael says the force is 400 officers short. 
400 officers short and, and they're citing fallout from the insurrection. What are you hearing from your former colleagues? Yeah, that's a lot different than what we heard the, uh, well, I left the manager Earth. say. A long time ago in 2003. Um, but I do speak to quite a few officers on the Hill, and I know from my time there. But what I witnessed on January 6th, uh, and, you know, since then in the conversations I've had with officers, is a, a real crisis in leadership within the United States Capitol Police that I don't think has yet to be addressed. It, it wasn't addressed. A real crisis of leadership at our Capitol. General's report. It's not something that's been talked about publicly. But there was a real failure in leadership uh, at the executive level or at the uh, command level within the United States Capitol Police. And until that's addressed, yeah. uh, I don't see... And within our fucking federal government. I don't see uh, the agency retaining officers who feel like they've been abandoned by their uh, command level officials. And unfortunately, I think that demands resignations. Yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time, officer. Thank you very much. Now, here's the thing that should be worrying everybody. And one of the reasons why, like, I've got friends that are very, uh, very upset with Joe Biden as well. They, they should be. Joe Biden deserves all the scorn they're getting, that, that he is getting, and the administration is getting. But goddamn, uh, we're seeing a fascist takeover of our government at all levels. They stormed the Capitol. Now they're running for office. At least 57 individuals, 57 individuals who played a role in the day's event, including some who were arrested on charges related to the Capitol attack, are running for office in 2022. It's going to be at school boards. It's going to be city councils. The January 6th storming of the Capitol is remembered as one of the darkest and most shameful episodes in American history, but at least 57 individuals who played a role in the day's events, either by attending the Save America rally that preceded the riots, or gathering at the Capitol steps, or breaching the Capitol itself, are now running for elected office. Rather than disqualifying them from public service, the events of January 6th appear to have served as a political springboard for dozens of Republicans who will be on the ballot this year for the federal, state, and local offices. It's difficult to state with precision just how many of those who participated in the rally on the ellipse marched to the Capitol or stormed the building will be on the ballot in 2022. In many states, candidate filing deadlines are months away. But a Politico review of Department of Justice case records, social media posts, and news accounts, and interviews with attendees found that last year alone, 11 January 6th protesters were elected to offices ranging from state legislature to city council to school boards. This year, more than two dozen are running for Congress, state legislature, or statewide office, including at least two protesters who actually entered the Capitol. At least five January Sixers are gearing up for gubernatorial races. Among them, Doug Mastriano, a Pennsylvania state senator and a leading voice in the national movement to discredit the 2020 election results. At least three candidates this year face charges related to the January 6 riots. Few of them express any contrition for their involvement in a day that ended up with an assault on the nation's temple of democracy, 140 injured police officers, and more than 700 arrests. They're going to try to twist it and bend it to fit the narrative that I'm a terrible human being, that I'm an insurrectionist, and I know that's coming, said Ryan Kelly, who is running for the governor of Michigan in an interview with Politico. But at the end of the day, sorry guys, I didn't do anything unlawful or illegal. You just didn't like what happened that day, and they just want to push the insurrection narrative. Right-wingers are morons. Kelly, like the majority of January 6th protesters who will be on the ballot this year, did not enter the Capitol or fight with police officers, and the rally in support of President Donald Trump's false claims of a stolen election was not his first. Kelly read, uh, read, Kelly 
led rallies in Lansing, Michigan in November of 2020 to protest the presidential election results and is the co-founder of American Patriot Council, an organization that demonstrated, uh, demonstrated against COVID restrictions at the Michigan Capitol building in April of 2020. That April demonstration drew national notice when armed protesters tried to enter the floor of the chamber and then occupied the gallery above. Oh, God. We're fucked, guys. We're fucked. I am not looking forward to this election. Because there is just a an apathy or even a, 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 a palpable disdain against the Democratic Party for not delivering with a lot of my leftist friends, and they're like, I voted for Joe Biden. Why would I vote for Democrats again? Look, he ain't even done anything. And I'm like, motherfuckers, like, the insurrectionists are running for office. Don't just vote Democrat. Go run for office yourself. Holy shit. We've got to, we've got to stop these people from taking office. I, yes, yes, Biden has been working hard to hand the midterms, but I mean, it's a strategic vote. I, as, 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 and especially as bad as Biden has been on COVID, I got to give him props on uh, the Afghanistan withdrawal. He actually, that's the best thing he did was just take the fucking heat for the Afghanistan withdrawal. Thank you, Biden, for doing that. Had some good nominees. The one that was a that, that got accused of being a communist got shot down for the CPB. Like she was, she was really good. He has tacitly uh, uh, pushed some good things, but ultimately, it's just they're not republic. They're not these fucking crazy ass motherfuckers. We can't let these motherfuckers take control, Donda. Donda, Donda, Donda. Fucking Kanye West was financed by fucking Republicans just to try to peel off votes from Biden. That is how fucking dirty they're getting. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Republicans ran Dave Chappelle in 2024. 